So, uh, like I uh, said, you know, I am in, I'm working in the University of Illinois. Actually, I have some close link with, uh, with Canada because I worked in Canada for 14 years before I went to Illinois. So I've been to Montreal many times to go back as well, Ottawa and Toronto, of course. But my home base was in, in BC, okay? So, but anyway, uh, I'm going to discuss about this knowledge mining in heterogeneous information networks. Uh, the work has been supported by many funding agents, including National Science Foundation, Army Research Lab, NASA, uh, Air Force, there are many funding agents support this work. The work has also been done by many students, at least uh, a bunch of them. Uh, they have been making active co contribution to this project. So uh, now, I'm, uh, since this one is a web science conference, I probably want to link the web with the network. Okay. Everybody knows web is a gigantic network uh, with all the pages linked. Actually, there are many, many other networks. For example, we look at the social networks. There are so many things linked together with people, with interesting things. We look at biological networks. Even research, we have networks. Uh, products, uh, customers, and, and different products, they link together as networks. But the interesting thing is most people study the networks, thinking the networks linking objects. Those objects are of the same type. Like webs, so you're just thinking about pages linking with pages. And social network, people are just thinking people linking just the friends linkages. But actually, the real network is much more complicated. In the sense, they're linked by many other different types of things. Just to give you a simple example. okay. Suppose we look at this research network, and we have authors, papers, venues. If you just think the authors link as network, you say we co-author paper, we, we, we link together. Actually, the information may lose quite a lot. Why you link together as a, as a co-author? Actually, you co-author particular papers published in a particular venue. That probably make more sense. You just say I and him are just co-authors. Okay. And the same thing if you look at the movies. You're just thinking movies, they have actors, directors, movies, captions, studios. They all link together from a fascinating network. Even for Facebook, those networks. If you think we linked as different communities, different groups exchange different kinds of information, it's better than just say friends, friendship links, right? So. We are thinking about if we turn the network into the original one, people really link via heterogeneous objects. This preserves more semantic information than you're just doing abstraction, say people linking with people, page linking with pages. Okay. So with this, things can be mined. Okay. So I just give you a simple example. We look at the computer science research network which actually originally was not even a network, just a database like this. Okay. You get a bunch of authors, you get a paper title, you get a venues you publish in a year. That's it. Okay. But with this two million entries of computer science publications, what things you can, you can mine? Okay. Just to give you some simple example. You can do clustering to say how the computer science research is structured. You can do ranking, say who are the leading authors on a particular issue. You can do uh, classification, saying you know what kind of thing, what groups are AI venues, or you can do similarity search, who is most similar to you. Okay, so there are lots of lots of things can be done. I'm going to show you in the real data, in the real DBRP network, and of course I, I occasionally use some other network as well. We'll say using this network, a lot of information can be mined. Okay. Something could even be surprising. Okay. I'm going to give you some example. Okay. The first example is clustering and ranking. Okay. Everybody probably know ranking because with a web, what is a page rank? Page rank, the major magic is you give an entry instead of returning you, you know, returning you 20,000 entries for a particular search query. 
They rank it. They rank it nicely, smartly. That's why you get a particular one like Obama. You will not think the Obama got 20,000 uh, you know, pages. You are thinking Obama is US president because that one is ranked high. Okay. So the same thing. But the problem is people are also doing clustering. People may not think about clustering and ranking may play together. Okay. But actually, you think about this. Okay. If you say you are ranked number one, then people will say, for what? Okay, you probably say, oh, in this particular philosophy, you know, particular thing, I rank number one. Okay, that once you reduce the size, you get a cluster, it, your ranking will make much more sense. But on the other hand, people were thinking of clustering. People say, I know clustering, you just group people together, everybody is equal, you put in the right cluster, you are done. Okay, but the thing is, not everybody is equal. You think about this, okay? If you were a big name in philosophy or cognitive science, probably your your, your weight you should weigh much more than the first year graduate student who just got a conference talk, right? So that simply says if you put objects weighted by ranking by ranks, you probably do better classmate. Okay. So we design an interesting mechanism just in the network, okay. You put, those are linked. This actually, if you look at this, this part is venue. This part are the authors. You know, they, they also, also they link together. Actually, in many cases, is via venues. So you can, based on this, you can cluster them and rank them. If you first rank them, say, who published more papers, who put rank higher, okay? If you take this, you do a ranking, and who ranks higher, who has more weights in the clustering, you go down back and forth, you actually will get better clusters. Okay. Then, of course, you would argue with me, what about you know, somebody po uh, you know, publish more papers in a bogus conference? Should this guy rank higher? Okay. Actually, it's either you use a, a little rule to con control this. So a simple rule could be only if you publish in the rag highly regarded venues, you rank higher. Okay. But how, how the venues are highly regarded? Because there are many, many highly regarded authors join or publish in this venue. Okay, you get into those kind of hits algorithm, you recurse in doing this, you do not need anybody train. You actually automatically get nice ranking and clustering. Okay, we actually try this from the computer science sense. You look at the left hand side is ranking, right hand side is clustering. At the very beginning, they are scattered. Okay, or mixed, but it just uh, using this algorithm a few rounds is clearly separated. Okay, the ranking get better ranking and the clustering get better clustering. Okay, if you want to get a refined clustering, we actually introduce more things instead of just to say venue and author. We introduce paper in the terms. That means, for example, you all publish paper in each chi, but you work on different things. You work on search. The other guy work on machine learning or logic, okay? So you can see, using different terms, you actually can do even better clustering and ranking, okay? So just to show you some interesting thing, we just blindly, you know, take computer science, you know, venues, put them into like 15, 20 clusters. This is just one of them. You probably can see, you no, know, actually nobody even trained it. You probably see the terms, the higher ranked terms like database, system, data, query, management, object, those remind you probably this one is about database systems. Then you look at the venues, top rank venues, top rank authors. You can even go down. For example, this one we go down to XML, XQuery. Those are the top authors. So actually, the clustering can really do something really good. Okay. Just give you another example, pictures. Okay. People want to cluster pictures together. Of course, you can cluster based on your dates and theme and location. Okay. But what about you based on picture, pictures, okay. image features? Okay. And you actually can, based on image color, distribution, texture, okay. just take them as a multi-dimensional space. You link all the picture together. You can do clustering ranking. You probably can see these are the pictures automatically, okay, nobody give you any text, 
you just look at the pictures, they are similar. They do cluster together. And the center of the cluster is a bigger, is showing the bigger one. Okay. So you can see those ocean view or those night view, they automatically cluster together. Okay. And even we tried, uh, one of my friends tried um, PubMed. He said, I want to cluster disease and find the best treatments. Okay. And it's very interesting. He has actually zero knowledge about medical science. He just based on the, this graph. You can see this is the article, this is disease, clinical trial, journal, author, treatment. He just assumed, okay, the more effective treatment for certain disease will be discussed more thoroughly in the highly regarded journals. Okay. So just based on this. He actually listed lots of different diseases. This one is about AIDS. He lists the top 10 most, most influential treatments. Okay, what is influential? For him, it's just to say, it's discussed in the scientific journal more thoroughly, much more articles. Okay, and, and actually, it is quite interesting because he actually sent it to his uh, medical school professors. They look at it. They actually were surprised that he knows that. Okay, because th th there are many treatments like AIDS. It's very new, and he did uh, catch it. Okay. So what about you put some training there? Because we just say clustering, which is unsupervised. Okay. You want, you may want to put some labor there because you know it. Okay. And what will happen in this network? You put some labor, like this paper is data mining paper. This author is database author. You put this, okay. With this label, they start propagating in the network to different kinds of obje objects, okay. You label on the paper, they can propagate to authors, to venue, to keywords, okay. So then everybody will get a benefit in that heterogeneous type of objects. You put different colors into this network. The network will start based on the links, propagate down to heterogeneous types of objects. They are impacted by your labor. Okay. And this impact will go into a loop is sim similar to those EM algorithms. I'm not getting into detail, but I'm going to show you the interesting thing. Okay. We tried a few quite competitive algorithms, like those competitive algorithms. The real data we tried is we took these fields, database, data mining, AI, and information retrieval. We took this, we say, doing classification for these four fields. That means which paper belongs to AI, which paper belongs to database. Okay. Then we pick up 14,000 papers, 14,000 authors, and the conference is 20, term is about 8,000. Okay. They all link together as a heterogeneous network. Now, with how much, you know, how many items you need to put the label. Okay. The interesting thing is with this, with 14,000 articles and, auth uh, and, and uh, authors, you'll probably see, even you just put 0.1% on author and paper, you actually can get a very high quality classification, 83.9% of classification accuracy. Remember, 0.1%, we have 14,000, means you just need to give 14 labels to authors and 14 labels to papers. Just need to label 14, okay? Then let it go. This network will propagate and automatically give you the good label. You probably can see the final result is pretty high accuracy on, you know, authors, papers, and conferences, okay? And I'll give you the concrete example you previous fear. It's very interesting. It's not only we give, remember, we give authors and the papers as labor. You see what's the impact for conferences and terms. Okay. Just give you an example. If you look at, for example, this site, retriever information web search text. This is about web conference. You think about it, for web and information retrieval, what is the best five terms? Remember, this system knows nothing about English, okay? But it gives this five terms, 
probably most experts would agree these are good five terms to describe IR and a web. Right? And even you look at this, you probably will argue with me for IR, why triple W? Triple W should rank almost number one. If it's not, okay. Of course, you probably say SIG IR is still number one. But the reason we actually analyze this is just because for IR, this is more focused. Okay, web, triple W is much broader, not only on IR, but also on AI, on data mining, on many other things, systems. So that's a reason focus in a particular cluster in the classification, this guy ranked even higher. Okay, so you probably see they have, they have their reasoning. Okay, this class, this is just byproduct for your classification. You get ranking as well because we do rank-based clustering. If you rank higher, you, you're, you play more role in your classification. And your classification right in the center, you rank also higher. Okay, so this is a clustering and a ranking. And this, one interesting thing is, you can do similarity search in on the big network, typed information network. Okay, just give you a simple example. Uh, we took uh, Christos Falusos here, okay. Uh, he's a professor in CMU working on both data mining and databases and also networks, okay. And we say, who is most similar to Christos Falusos? Okay, even you, if I ask you this question, you probably say, it depends what you mean similarity. Okay. Of course, Christos Falusos is most similar to his brothers, right? But of course, this is based on DNA structure rather than, <laughs> rather than others. But if you look at the different structures in the network, they do have different answers, okay? For example, if you look at this network, if you say my similarity based on the past, APA, what is A? A is author, P is paper. APA means you actually share common papers based on this ranking. It's interesting. Christos Falusos is ranked, you know, those are the similar ones. Of course, Christos is most similar to himself, right? But then all the remaining people actually were his uh, ex-students or very close collaborators, like, like uh, Spiros Papadimitriou, now in Rutgers, G. Monsen in, in, in Georgia Tech, uh, Yuri Laskovic actually was, uh, is in Stanford. So you probably can see, these are his closed collaborators. Okay, but if you look at another one, for example, APVPA, okay, that means you look at this structure, author paper, this V is venue. They share common venues who is most similar, okay, using same DBRP data. Actually, you probably see me, Rakesh Agar, Jian Pei, Sharagar, these are most similar to him, okay, in the sense we publish many things, many papers in the similar conferences. Similar values. Probably you even say, I actually know Raghu Ramakrishnan, Nick Kudas is, is a professor in Toronto. You say, oh, they, why they are not as similar as, as me and Rakesh? Just because Raghu and Nick Kudas, they are more on database. They publish more in the database values, but not also in data mining values. That probably can explain. They, they do take care of everything, okay? Venues and the, the number of papers. And how do you get this? Okay. The interesting thing is we checked, we originally want to use existing measures, like a random walk, or personalized random walk, or pairwise random walk, or sim rank. We actually use a personalized page rank and sim rank, those are very popular measures. We found they would not get very good results, especially for the long tailed objects. Long tail means you're not a star, you're just a just a smaller one, for example, just a, you know, graduating students, okay? I'll just give you one example. We took An Hai Duan. Why I took him? Just because he's younger, much younger than me, and he's known but not a very well known, okay? He, he got a PhD in 2002. Uh, he, was, he was in my group in the UIUC, but he was grabbed by Wisconsin, now he's in Wisconsin-Madison, okay? Now we say who is most similar to him, okay? The, the interesting thing is if you use personalized page rank, you probably know the page rank is you got more point to point to you, you actually weighted high. This also for similarity somehow, okay? So you probably can see 
uh, who is most similar to An Hai Duan? So they list a bunch of names, Philip Yu, me, Hector, Gehard. Those are very senior people. They publish six or 700 papers in the field. Okay. So that's not a very similar because he probably only published about 80 or 90. Okay. So, but why these guys were ranked high for page rank, first night page rank, they attract, the similarity also attract those big names. This is the magnetic page rank, uh, you know, effect. So we use a different measure, okay, the measure invented by ourselves, okay. Then we found, you probably can see, that's the one we got, passing, pass-based similarity. We find his most similar to Jignish, Pater, Amor, Jun Yang, and Randy Miller. Uh, you probably know Randy Miller because he's a professor, she is a professor in Toronto. But, but she is also younger, you probably can see. Uh, I did not put him, Renee, you could not find her picture on the web. But anyway, what you can see, Jignish Pater, the interesting thing is when I talk in Michigan in Ann Arbor, everybody was laughing. The reason was Jignish Pater was a professor in Michigan, uh, Ann Arbor. But almost similar year, same year, was grabbed by Wisconsin. Now they, they tour in the same group. So how could it be that similar, two guys in the same group, all grabbed one from Illinois, the other one from, uh, from Michigan? Okay, so of course, the, in the world, among half a million authors, these two are most similar, right? So, but you probably can see, it's very sensitive, not for the very you know, high-end product, even for long-tail one. Okay, I probably can show you for the long tail one, sometimes it's magic, you can predict something. Okay, one interesting thing was raised by, uh, by you know, Christos Valusos was, he actually listened to my previous talk in Barcelona. Uh, I gave a keynote speech in ECML PKDD. He raised question, he said, uh, Jawe, you, your, your system looks magic. Uh, I give you one question whether you can answer. I say, what's the question? He said, can you predict uh, what paper I'm going to write next year? Okay. <laughs> of course, I treat this one as a joke. I say, I could not even predict what paper I myself going to write. <laughs> how, could, how could I predict you? But I came, I went back to, to, to my office. I talked to my student, E. Jo Sen. She was actually serious. She says, of course, nobody can predict the, the title of the paper. But what kind of thing he's going to work on next year? I'm pretty sure he is going to work on the, uh, on the data mining, on the information networks, on web, on, on you know, other things. It's, it's not that hard. She said, I can invent an even more difficult question. Say, in the next five years, what new authors Crystal is going to work with? I said, that's not possible because he even do not know what, it, what his new student will get. He said, I'm not, she said, I'm not going to predict a student. I'm predicting something already in the database. Okay. So then we start working on it. Actually, just based on this schema, you, you get a paper, author, topic, and venue, the citation. Okay. And with this, say, if you want to work out future co-authors, Co-author actually in the information network is APA, author, paper, author. Okay. Then you need to use all the possible existing paths to predict what paths will impact this co-authorship. Okay. And what is a path you can think? You, can, you will not think about too long paths because the semantics you get too long, you lose a lot of semantics. We only look at lens three and lens four paths. You can see this is APPA. This arrow means you cite the paper. That means if you author this paper, this paper said another paper, are you going to work with the author you cited? Okay, so that's one meta pass. There are many other meta pass. Okay. Then we use the real data to test to see what's in paper science. They really, really impact your future co authorship. Okay. We use the training data. We actually found, we, we calculated the p-values okay, using logistic regression. And at p-value, you can see we put a few very low p-value as, as four star. Four star means you really have the prediction power. Okay. You think about this. This is share co-value is four star. Co-author is four star. Co-term is four star. That means 
you share common co-authors, or you, you go to the same venue, or you use similar terms, likely in the future you are going to co-author. Okay. But you probably see there are some very, very bad ones, very bad p-value, very big p-value, like this one. Okay. This one says, you cite this paper, this paper cite the other paper. Are you going to co-author with the other paper? Remember, every paper may cite 20 papers, and 20 papers, everyone will cite another 20 papers. So that link is very weak. Just give you an example. Suppose I have cited Mark Newman because he is a physicist in University of Michigan, but he works on networks. He, pu he published a big book called Introduction to Networks. Okay. I use that book actually in my class. If Mark Newman is a physicist, cite Albert Einstein. Do you think I'm going to work with Einstein? I did cite Mark Newman. Right, so it's, no, it's not possible, right? So that simply says that link is very weak in semantics. You will not really have predicting power, okay? We took this, okay? Then we actually do, did a real test. Of course, there are many, many no-name tests, but the one interesting one is I text my own student, Jan Pei. He is still a professor in uh, Simon Fraser University in Canada. I predict him because he got a PhD from me in 2002. I predicted from 2003 to 2009, that's six years, what new co-authors he's going to get. Okay, because he just got a PhD. He's a free agent, right? So we predicted five. It happens, I, 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 two years ago, I uh, got into the KDD conference keynote. He was a KDD, actually, PC chair. He was uh, chairing my session. I showed among the top five predicted, Actually, four of them were true. The only one who were not true is Osman Zayan. Actually, I know Osman very well because he's a professor in Alberta. I was his advisor as well. They were essentially in the same group, but they never co-authored. Co so I asked GMP, I said, what's the problem with, with you? You never co-authored with the other professor. He actually raised the hand. He said, you know, you said it's 2009, if you extend it, to two more years, 2011, we did have a joint paper, okay? So that happens, it's almost a prediction, it's 100% true. Remember, the system can never see before, see forward. You, you're up to 2002, that's it, okay? You only see the previous data, but you can predict the future one, so it's interesting. And then student, another student, Xiao Yu, he actually got this, he says, what about we use it for recommendation systems? Remember the recommendation system re recommend movies, Yelp recommend you know which restaurant you want you want to go. Whether you can get a good prediction accuracy comparing the current state of art. Okay, the interesting thing becomes we actually tr found for the recommendation system the major problem is cold star problem. What is cold star? It means if you were new, suppose you were a new customer. You have got no history on what movies you're renting or what kind of restaurant you go. Okay, you have no history. And another side could be you get a new movie, a new book, nobody has rented yet. Okay, if both sides are new, it's very cold. And how could you predict? Okay, the interesting thing is everything's linked. Okay, the people are linked. The author, book, movies, and the books are all linked. So you use linked information. You actually can turn the cold star into warm star. The interesting thing is author, uh, I mean, the people have networks. You based on the, your close friends and you know, all this information. And also you based on the movie information, they have, they have editors, they have uh, authors, they have uh, directors and uh, you know, all these. And finally, even in the long tail thing, you can do pretty high quality prediction. Okay, we just show you, this one actually just published this year's Wisdom Conference. You can see we use IMDB, which is movie database, use Yelp, which everybody probably is also using it when you go to restaurant. Okay, then you look at this, you probably can see the last two actually is ours. It's using heterogeneous record, heterogeneous information network. One is to global ranking, one is to personalized ranking. With personalized recommendation, we get the highest on, on both IMDB and Yelp. Okay. So that's becomes pretty exciting. 
Okay. Of course, I have some students still work on this. But the problem immediately you may come back to me says you are using structured data. Okay. Using you know the, the work on DBRP, which you get authors, you get to you know accept the title is just a bunch of keywords, but all the other is the structured data. But the real world is not structured. Okay. Um, I cannot say real world is not, at least 85% of data is actually text data. Okay. Can we turn the unstructured text to, to structured network? Okay. That means we are facing the real world filled up with news, Wikipedia blogs, tweets, multimedia data, all these things. Okay. They, are, they cannot fit into my relational database. They cannot do the nice network construction. Can we do something with it? Okay. That's the one we actually spend a lot of efforts recently. I will show you what we are doing. Okay. That means we do take the text data. Sometimes the text data may have some entities, and sometimes the text data may have other information. The key is whether we can do hierarchical topic discovery, we can do phrase mining, and with this, we can construct the hierarchy, construct networks. Then the previous, previously discussed methods can be used for unstructured data as well. Okay. So now, let's give you uh, some interesting studies in my group. Okay. One study was done by Marina Danilevsky. Uh, she just uh, got a PhD. She uh, was recruited by IBM Armadan, their text uh, analytics group. Okay, just uh, recently, just uh, two months ago. And what she did is this. Okay. She says, we can first remember most people doing topic model. I assume you know something about topic model, which, for example, in Princeton, David Bly actually did a lot of topic model. That means you got a lot of text, okay, many, many uh, different articles you finally can group them into different topics. Each topic with a bunch of words to describe this topic with different probability distribution. Okay, that's a topic modeling. But the problem for topic modeling is they take a single word. Okay. Remember, in the real life, you take a single word. In many cases, you may not really tell you much. Just give you a simple example. We say United States. You, you take United, you take States as two words, they have lots of different interpretations. How could you say United States you can put into a country name? Okay, that, that's actually this is a very, very obvious example. Now we look at this, okay. If we really got words, we want to combine them into phrases that immediately will become much more meaningful. And when you do modeling, when you do many things, clustering, many things will become more meaningful. Okay, but how can you mine those Interesting phrases. Okay, so Marina first got uh, the first and first uh, algorithm in in my group, which is very interesting. Get very interesting answers, and I'm introducing another one, which is even more exciting. Okay, this one is she first used LDA, which is David Bly, you know, the Princeton. They already did it. Okay. What she did is she used called background LDA. That means you want to partition this group into, say, 10 different topics. I give you 11. One is the background. All the words you do not know where to put, you put into the background. Okay, then you get the other 10. Okay, then take this 10. What she was doing is she goes back to data mining side, doing frequent pattern mining for each topic words. Okay, that means she wants to combine, go to the real text, combine those single words into phrases. Okay. And she even say, you do not need to worry about uh, gaps and orders. So give you a simple example. Mining frequent pattern, frequent pattern mining, essentially they're the same thing. Uh, it's just uh, people you know, doing different ordering. I think of French and English, sometimes you do different ordering as well, right? And you probably see the mining, even you say top K frequent close patterns, but once you check what is a frequent thing, you will drop the top K, you will drop the closed, you still have mining frequent patterns. Okay, so that's the power of frequent pattern mining. Forget the order, forget the gap, 
you still can get a right, right sentence, which one is frequent. And after you get a frequency, you check these four standards. One called coverage, that means whether it covers a lot of text, okay, articles. For example, you use the information retriever and cross-language information retriever. Of course, the information retriever as a phrase is better because it has better coverage, gets much bigger coverage than cross-language information retriever. Right. Then if you use another one is you look at within this topic, not within the other topics. Just give you an example. Okay. For example, you say uh, you know, RDA. You probably know the RDA actually has several different interpretations, right? But if you say this RDA, suppose it's on topic model, you put it right on the topic. The other one probably can put it into the other phrase. Then you finally, you look at pure. If it's pure, you take it. If it's not pure, it's scattered in different things, you don't take it, okay? Phraseness, that means, for example, active learning, they get together as a, quite often they get together. The other one is the learning classification. You know, these two happen sometimes in the same sentence, but they, they not form a phrase because they do not really put them together, okay? Then completeness, like you say, vector machine and support vector machine. Every time you get a vector machine, you almost get a support vector machine. That's the reason you take support vector machine instead of vector machine, okay? So you probably can see, using this philosophy, we actually tried just to say, take the DBRP text, she partitioned them into different groups, into different topics, but the topic is mixed up with the phrases, okay? So you probably see the last one. This, uh, her master algorithm called Kurt. This one you probably can see, what she found the top 10 most important thing in machine learning. You probably see the learning support vector machine, reinforcement learning, feature selection, continuing random field, classification, decision trees, constraint set, satisfaction, dimensionality reduction, matrix factorization. You probably see she actually did not use anybody train anything. Okay, just based on her four standards, she got this one, one topic, which is machine learning topic. You probably can see, even for many experts on machine learning, you probably were by it. Remember, this system knows nothing about English or French. Okay, so it's just based on frequency together. Yes? The other columns are the other methods. Okay, this one is another popular studies to get the methods, uh, single ones. These, uh, some other uh, KP relational one to get uh, multiple ones. This is Kurt minus coverage, and that means not consider out coverage. This one is minus purity, this minus freeness, or minus completeness. That means you, you take any, knock down any standard, you try it. You will not get, get as good result as this one. That means you need all the standards together, then you can get the right one, okay? So that's uh, her uh, study. A student, he actually is also going to graduate. Microsoft Research already grabbed him, okay? He actually, using the, the words construct networks, based on the network, can partition them into different parts and get a hierarchy of the phrases, okay? I probably will not have time to get this. I'll introduce the third one. The third one actually was another student. He actually invented a very efficient, but a very smart algorithm, okay? And the, 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 the paper is still under review. It's not published yet, okay? Uh, his name is, uh, you know, Amit Arkishki, okay? He just used proof statistics, okay? And what he did is he took the phrases, just to give you one example, okay. This one is a real example for the DBRP text, the title. Markov blanket feature selection for support vector machines, okay. Then how automatically the system can get all the right phrases, no more, no less, you can get right phrases, okay. The interesting thing is he observed if you look at the original potential pair, the consecutive pairs, whether they should be phrases like United States or United Kingdom, 
or they should be separated, okay, can be simply done by simple statistics. The statistics is based on the simple, you, we call alpha, you can, you, you probably know, I, I do not know whether you know z-score or, uh, you know, for simple statistics. Okay, the, essentially this, okay, okay, just to give you a simple example. You probably know what is a bear, bear curve, what is Gaussian distribution, okay. For Gaussian distribution, anything which getting together, the chance is very rare, they may fall down into this part, okay. And if they fall down to only, if they fall down to three standard deviation away, these are very rare chances, 0.1%. You just based on the, the big numbers, the limitation theorem, you, you know if they really getting together, it's not so easy. The chance is three standard deviation away, they must be a phrase, okay? So based on this idea, he basically just using those simple triers, simple formula like this one, okay? Expected one, the real one, you know, just normalize it, okay? He analyzed this, this phrase, this title. You probably can see, he found support vector getting together, the standard deviation is 12. They simply say they must get together, okay? Then what is the next one? He found a support vector machine is the next one. The standard deviation is eight. So it still must get together, okay? Once they get together, the interesting thing is you may have selection for, for support. You say, that could be a phrase, but actually it was eaten up by support vector machine and feature selection. You will not form any candidate phrase. The testing, okay? So you can see here, you get a feature selection, standard deviation is six, this one's five. So you automatically grab all those phrases in a very nice, very efficient way, okay? And he basically turned around of Marina's study. Marina's study is first using topic model. Then for each topic, try to construct a frequent phrase. He said, I first do the free, f frequent phrase mining, and then I do topic model. Let's see what things will happen. Okay, that's what he did. He did pre-processing, then get a frequent, uh, frequent continuous pattern mining phrase construction, then use free construction to do bag of phrases and finally do topic model, okay? And I give you some simple example, okay? This one was on Associated Press News, 1998. Okay, he got many topics. This is just showing a bunch of topics. You probably can see, if using his method, he can get unigrams. Unigram already better than many, the, the, the original topic model. Then you look at the, the look at, uh, just give you a simple example, okay. You probably look at this one. This one's called Gaza Strip, West Bank, Palace, uh, Pierre, uh, pa, uh, I think it's, uh, and this is United States Arab Report, Prime Minister, uh, this is Shamir. That's 1998, you probably can see. This is, must be about the Israel and Palestine the conflict, okay. And if you look at, uh, this is about President Bush, this is about health care, you know, this is about uh, energy and environmental nuclear weapons as it ring. You probably can see, they automatically nicely group things together. It's much telling than the single word. The phrases, really telling, okay. Even I can show you the interesting thing is he used Yelp data. Yelp is, you know, typed in a very relaxed way, okay. And, and how can you group nice, find nice phrases? You probably see you look at this. This actually is a, is a Chinese and Thai food. You get spring roll, fried rice, egg rolls, Chinese food, pad thai, dim sum, Thai food. Okay, you probably see this nicely, they group things together. Of course, you may immediately point out, you say, we did not do any NLP. You probably see, this one said, food was good, which is not a phrase. We also treat like a phrase, which is true, okay. Sometimes we do. You probably see there are a bunch of things. Prices are reasonable, love this place. You actually also group like a phrase. But you do additional NLP, you can get rid of them, okay? But, but the interesting thing is, it is very efficient. You probably can see, uh, for those bigger DBRP title abstracts or something, you can see using the original PDLDA, you may take that many days. But this one actually takes just hours. 
So uh, I think I probably should finish. But I just to give you a very short introduction on some other things. We also not only work on the text, but also work on extract types and roles in the data. Okay. For example, extract the advisor advisees from DBRP. DBRP only has publications. No advisor advising in which years are advising, advised, uh, being advised. And we actually got like, a, you know, you probably see this is Michael Jordan. This is David Bly I just mentioned about the topic model. He actually got a PhD from God and got a postdoc advisor by John Lafferty. And the year, that's what our prediction, that's a real one. Okay, so these are very, very interesting. You probably can see the prediction real one, They're very reasonably consistent. Okay. We actually can find using Kennedy's family relationship as training, we can find a rooster for family from the, from the newspapers. And use the rooster for family, we can find Kennedy family relationships also from the newspaper. And even for the truth, for example, the data got the conflict information. Which one is true? Okay. Uh, just give you an example. A simple example is this one is about movie data. The movie data, there are lots of movie providers. Like you can see this, there are 100,000 claims and 100,000 movies. Uh, we try to find uh, who are the directors of, of the movie. Not all the information on the web is true. Okay. And this one, we get Microsoft Bing data. What they want is without anybody train. Okay. For these 100,000 claims, can you exactly identify which claim is right, which claim is wrong? <coughs> okay. Then you probably can see the F1 measure, we got uh, about 0 0.9. Uh, accuracy close to 0 0.9 without a single piece of training data. Okay. But of course, I cannot say without a single piece. We do have 100 labor data within this 100,000 claims. Okay. So what I should say is the network, actually, once you use a heterogeneous network, linking different types of information together, it becomes very powerful. I actually have, a, have another paper published that the privacy will also suffer. Okay. Like a KDD, a few years ago, they used uh, one data from, from China. They say they remove all the identities. They get all the relationship and networks. They ask people to do data mining. Okay. We use the same data show. You actually can restore the identity. Okay. In the sense, once you use heterogeneous network, you link them together. Okay, it becomes very powerful in, in, in deduction, in inference. And some privacy originally, you thought you, you, you mask them out, you can dig them back. Okay. So, uh, but anyway, we think the network is very powerful. Once you get a massive data linking together as network, lots of things can be done. Okay. So we do have some references. If you like, uh, this is my student. Uh, her PhD thesis already turned into a book. So mining heterogeneous information networks, principles and methodologies, and it's an e-book. Uh, I do not know whether your university has a, has a, this one called uh, Morgan Claypool Publishers. If you have a contract with them, all the members in the university can be can download the book for free. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Han, for the inspiring talk. We have time for a couple of questions.